Hello, welcome to Cast Theology, a channel about theology and beer, and in today's episode, we're heading into the cellar to answer the question, what is keg beer? So, if you have ever wondered what keg beer is, then go and grab yourself a drink, and put a coat on, because it's cold in the cellar, and let's answer the question then, what is keg beer? Well, keg beer is one of the most popular methods of dispensing beer in pubs, clubs, bars, micropubs, community centres, frat parties, all those house parties that you see in those silly American Pie style teen movies, beer festivals, all sorts of places. It isn't a style of beer in itself, but is a way of containing beer, transporting beer and dispensing beer. So let's talk about the keg. A keg is a pressurised container with beer in it. To put it really, really, really simply, it's like a massive can of fizzy pop or soda. The beer inside it is therefore designed with this in mind, and it isn't the same type of beer that you'd find in a cask ale or a bottled beer, which is bottled conditioned. Those are stories for other times. Beers in kegs are usually pasteurised or filtered to make sure that there's no more active ingredients in them, which prolongs A, both the shelf life of the beer, and B, ensures the same quality and taste across the board. Two kegs that are kept exactly the same way will taste exactly the same, which of course is why a lot of beer producers will choose this method of dispense and containment, especially those that produce hundreds and hundreds of gallons of the same stuff. How does it work then? Well, the pressure in a keg will not push the drink to the taps very effectively, so gas motors will be used to push all that lovely liquid through to get dispensed. This gas is usually carbon dioxide gas, but some beers, such as say Guinness or smooth flow beers, this is usually substituted for a nitrogen carbon dioxide mix to create a smoother beer. The kegs themselves work kind of like a can of soda or pop, but with a massive straw in them. They draw the liquid from the bottom of the barrel to ensure that every single drop of beer can get sent to the taps. There isn't a bottom of the barrel with this method, because it's being drawn from the bottom and it won't stop until it's empty. A clever little floaty ball system in the cellar will cut off the supply of the beer when the keg is empty, which tells the bar staff when to change the barrel. If nothing's coming out of the tap, then it's time for a new keg. Simple as that. Now, although kegs generally uh, follow a universal standard uh, in the way that they work, the way that they connect to the pipes in the cellar and to the taps out the front actually differs in a couple of different ways. Um, there have been three different types in my experience over the years. Uh, there is the common clamp and twist, the slightly less common insert and twist, and then there is the slide method, which in my experience of over 20 odd years has only ever been used by Guinness beers, such as Guinness and Hop House 13. This of course applies to pubs, um, and certainly in the movies, uh, especially those teen movies when you see, see them have a keg, um, you will see them using a pump action mechanism which uses air to pump all the beer out, but the principle is still the same, using an external gas to drive the liquid out. Now, it's always worth a mention that kegs come in a few distinct sizes so that businesses can buy a keg that will match how much they sell of a particular beer. Uh, yep, so companies will micromanage how much they sell. Uh, it's just good business. All that beer down the drain is also money down the drain. Now, in my personal experience, here's what I've used. Now, there is the not so common 6.6 .6 gallon keg, uh, which I've only seen used a couple of times in my experience. Then you have the most popular style of keg, which is the 11 gallon keg. Now in TV, movies, uh, this is the keg that they'll display. Um, now the 11 gallon keg, uh, also sometimes a 10 gallon keg, Stella use a 10 gallon keg for some weird reason. Um, but yeah, the 11 gallon keg is the one that you'll see in, in movies, TV, frat parties, all that good stuff. Um, and here's a bit of a tangent for you, uh, which is probably going to spoil TV for you. But if you ever see a, a frat boy with a keg over his shoulder, um, that's an empty barrel. Uh, sorry to, to spill this, guys, but kegs are heavy. Uh, they've got they've got like 11 gallon of liquid in. It's heavy stuff. Um, so if you ever see a guy just like slinging it around like it's nothing, that barrel's empty, it's a prop. Um, even the 11 gallons, I don't 
uh, I can't pick up, you know, it's a two-handed job and I end up, and you end up rolling stuff um, more than you do lifting them because you will actually break your spine if you try and keep lifting these things. So, tangent over, your next step up from the 11 gallon keg, the most popular one, is now we're getting into ones that you don't tend to see on TV, um, which is the 18 gallon keg. Uh, then up from that, you have the 22 gallon keg. And then finally, uh, one I have used in the past, I don't have any pictures of at the minute, um, but imagine the 22, but scaled up a wee bit. That is the 36 gallon keg. Now that's the largest one I've certainly seen used in businesses. Uh, and those things are freaking heavy, let me tell you. Now, regardless of the size of your keg, it still needs to be kept in cool conditions uh, in order to keep your temperature constant, because much like if you keep a can of pop or soda in a hot room, as soon as you open it, it's just gonna come out as frothy fizz. And the same thing applies to beer. Now, keeping it at the correct temperature is also very key in extending the shelf life of your beer. Now, they do get about a month on a keg because they are pasteurized, and although there shouldn't be any live ingredients in them, uh, occasionally you will st still get bits of yeast and whatever, um, so they will spoil over time. And they can also go into the beer pipes or beer lines, which means, of course, that your beer lines also need to be cleaned fairly regularly, as well as the connectors. Uh, because this, at the end of the day, is something that people are going to drink. And much like the knives in the kitchen, your beer equipment needs to be clean. Now, keeping it in a temperature controlled cellar is only part of the dispensing system. Um, cellars generally aren't at the temperature that it comes out in the other end in the pint glass. So the pipes themselves that go from the keg to the tap will often be run through uh, special chillers which lower the temperature much lower than that of the cellar uh, and that's how the beer gets to you on the other end such as say your Guinness extra cold or a lager. Uh, the chilling most of it doesn't happen actually in the keg but rather in the pipework on the way to the tap. And there you have it that is a short brief explanation of keg beer uh, which is a pressurized container that has proven to be one of the easiest methods of storing and dispensing all kind of lovely brews. So next time you're in a bar drinking a draft brew, uh, like a nice lager or something like that, you'll know a bit more about how that lovely beer made its way to you. So until next time, go grab yourself a drink, keep asking questions and I'll see you again soon if you like this kind of thing. And if you want to learn more about theology or beer, the best way of course is to hit the subscribe button. But until then folks, Take care, and I'll see you later.